Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and to the shop. If you're like me, uh, I love using really sharp chisels, but I hate sharpening them. It's been a real battle over the years to find a system to quickly and efficiently sharpen good chisels well. Uh, I've tried a lot of different things from diamond stones to wet stones over here. Haven't been really happy with either the quality of the sharpening with something like this diamond stone or just how long it takes and just it's kind of a pain to go through the process with these wet stones. So that brings us to the point here. I just bought this Work Sharp 3000 sharpener and I think I finally found a solution that's gonna work really well for me. And I wanted to show you guys in this video. Let's talk a little bit quick about the economics of sharpening. Here you'll see these are Stanley Sweetheart chisels. I use a lot of these. I've probably got four or five different kits. I keep a kit on each van. I keep some chisels in my uh, tool bag, in my final kit, in the shop. So I've probably got at least 30 of these in different sizes, lots of duplicates. They run about 25 to $30 per chisel, which is not cheap. You definitely can't afford to throw these away just because they get dull. So you really need to come up with a quick sharpening solution for them. At the same time, if you value your time very much, if it takes you half an hour to sharpen one chisel, you've just spent more time sharpening than the chisel was actually worth. So you really need something quick to use. A lot of you guys probably also, like me, use a lot of or have used a lot of cheap chisels over the years. Early on in my career, when my chisels would get dull, I would just go to the box store and buy more. Um, and then ended up throwing a lot of these away because if I valued my time very much, I could actually just go and buy new chisels cheaper than it took me to go through the process of sharpening. The other thing is if you're buying lower quality chisels, it's actually harder to sharpen these than a higher quality chisel. We'll get to that in a second. So to understand how to come up with a good system for sharpening, we have to understand the basic principles of sharpening. And to get a just phenomenally sharp chisel, all you're really doing is you're creating two surfaces that are perfectly flat. And I mean like extremely, extremely flat coming down at an angle. Um, you can see this chisel I actually sharpened yesterday um, it's honed uh, really well, polished, I should say polished really well, so it's extremely sharp. If I bring it up here to my arm, you can see I don't have much hair left on my arm because I was testing all my chisels yesterday. It'll shave your arm really well. That's a sharp chisel. Um, to do that, we need to be able to go through multiple grits as well as even um, some leather stropping compounds and this sharpener, I find, allows me to go through that whole process really quickly to get some great results on my chisels. So how does the Work Sharp 3000 sharpener work as compared to other methods? Uh, right here, you'll see a typical wet stone. It's got different grits on each side, and usually I would have a pan of water set up, and obviously you need these to be wet, they're wet stones, and you would go through the process of flattening them, and then you would either freehand this or use a guide to sharpen your leading edge as well. With this system, what we have is basically the same concept, but we've got a glass tempered wheel here, and that goes on top of the sharpener, and then we apply um, some peel and stick sandpaper to that wheel, uh, and that is how we're gonna go through multiple grits and get a really nice polished finish on these chisels. So it's really, really easy to get started. We're gonna go with our most coarse grit first and just plop that wheel on there. And you can see it's really easy to change these in and out. You just tighten the knob, you can turn it on and you're ready to go to work. By the way, guys, if you enjoy this channel and get value from it, an easy way to help support the channel is to use the affiliate links that are in the video description. I will have all of these items linked in the video description. 
you purchase through those links, I get a kickback from Amazon and it really helps me out. So thanks for that. A real quick, basic thousand foot understanding of how this works. The disc is spinning. We've got our sandpaper on there and you just kind of lead the chisel in to flatten the base. Now, how are we gonna get the, the leading edge here or the bevel sharpened? That's where this handy feature right here comes in. Now, there, I've got paper on both the top surface and the bottom surface. So whenever you put your chisel into this guide right here, you can basically just push it up against the underside of the wheel and it will sharpen that beveled edge as well. So you can kind of just keep going back and forth between the two, getting it to where you need it to be. So the first time you sharpen your chisel is by far the, the time that it takes the longest because these chisels come from the factory and they're not perfectly flat. So it takes a little bit longer to get them nice and flat the first time, but after you do that once, it's gonna sharpen up much fa faster on the next times. So I'm gonna just give you an example with this chisel here because it's a good uh, example to see. I did sharpen this, but if we can get in really close, you'll notice you can see all of this is polished up here. This is polished down here, but we have this area right here in the center where you can see it's not polished. And that's because this is not perfectly flat. And I worked on this for quite a bit and still wasn't able to basically grind this down to where it would be perfectly flat. It's still good enough because this whole area up here is flat and that's gonna allow me to get that really sharp edge. But the first time we sharpen the chisel, it's really all about getting this backside flat and working this top bevel down to the angle that it perfectly matches uh, my scenario here. I did find that with these Stanley Sweetheart chisels, the bevel angle was slightly different than what I was producing on the work sharp. Just took me a couple minutes to just very finely get that bevel to match on the work sharp. But you'll see here, you're gonna have different angles with uh, like block plane irons versus the angles that you would have on a chisel. And that can be adjusted right here. You've got a lever that's gonna go up and down and it's got detents set where you can go to different spots. Um, it really doesn't allow you to micro adjust that. So you're kind of stuck on the, the preset detents, but I found it matched these Stanley St Sweetheart chisels pretty well. So let's just go through this process and let me show you how this works. So starting off, the first thing we want to do to produce, you know, again, our perfectly in plane sides is to get this backside perfectly flat. So this is all polished now. We're actually gonna be tearing this up because uh, this is, we're gonna be starting off with either 80 grit or 120. I find if you are flattening a chisel for the first time, you're probably gonna want 80 grit because it's just gonna work a lot faster. So we'll turn this on and I'm gonna go ahead and rock the chisel down into place. You don't wanna obviously put your leading edge down first. You just wanna rock it into place like so. So that's doing work, but like I said, this was already sharpened, um, so it doesn't really have much to do. But I'm gonna pull this off, and now I've got some nice, a uh, little bit deeper scratches that you can see, and I'm gonna insert this now, very carefully, slowly up into place. And you're just gonna hold that there with a little bit of pressure and let that sandpaper and that wheel do its work. So now we went from a very fine uh, polished edge to you can see the cut marks from that heavier grit on there now. If you're taking off a lot of material, you'll also be creating a burr on the edge and that's where you kind of want to be going back and forth between flat and then inserting it in here to kind of remove that burr. And then as you pull this out, let it fall down with some pressure. And there's actually a piece of sandpaper on this base right here. And that will help remove that burr. 
So when it, where this unit comes uh, with the kit, it's got two glass wheels. And I knew, you know, to do a proper job sand or um, sharpening a chisel, you need to be able to go through the grits gradually. That's one of the reasons I found this diamond stone just didn't work very well because it goes from 300 grit to 1,000 grit. And it's just not enough steps to, to really um, polish those marks out. Uh, it's just too big of a jump. So I've basically got 120 on here. And then I have four discs. I've got a 220, a 400, a 1000. And then I've also got two leather straps um, with a little bit heavier cutting compound on this one and for some very fine polishing compound on this one. And it seems like a lot of steps, but that's really what it takes to sharpen chisels or plain irons well. So if we're done with 120, we'll real quick move up to 220. <clears throat> and you'll notice I put my pencil marks on this and now those pencil marks are all gone except for again this center area of this chisel where it's just not flat. You could spend a lot of time trying to get this flat but I can see that the rest of this plane is good um, and I'll be able to sharpen it just fine without that area needing to be flat. If this area was up uh, in contact with the leading edge then I would need to flatten that. So we'll come back on here doesn't really take very long. Uh, just give it a little time. And you can kind of see even just by looking at it, now our, our cut marks are much finer. And again, after you sharpen a chisel for the first time, it goes much, much faster to touch it up uh, the, the times that you want to basically polish it up after that. So that's done. Again, you can see how quickly it is to move through these grits. Move up to 400, drop it on. And now you can just feel at that 400 grit, it's really not cutting much at all. Um, you're really just kind of very lightly sanding out those cut marks that you made with the heavier grits. And you'll start to see that it'll become more of a polished look and you won't see those cut marks on the leading edge of the chisel nearly as much. So just kind of taking a look there. We're, we're getting to where we want to be. Now we'll move up to 1000. And the thing that I'm really watching as I go through this is I'm watching those cut marks on the chisel. I want to see those disappearing as we go through this. Now you will notice uh, as you go through these grits, especially as you get to the finer sandpaper, this is 1000. Um, I forgot one other tip. Whenever I put the paper on these wheels, you might not be able to see it, but I labeled each wheel with the grit that is on it with a permanent marker on the side here so I can see that this is a thousand grit right here. You'll get that kind of buildup of that metal material, which is gonna make it not want to keep cutting. Um, you, you could just change the disc, but I do find that you can blow this off and it'll kind of unclog those pores and you'll get longer life out of your discs. So we just finished the, the 1000 grit glass wheel here and it's, it's really polishing up nice you can see some very small scuff marks uh, in that circular pattern from that 1000 grit still. Um, we could move up to a 3600 grit sanding disc. I am just moving up to my leather stropping wheel at this point. So if you're not familiar with what that is, uh, you basically have leather applied to our tempered glass wheel as you see here and then we've got some polishing compound that we apply to this wheel and that gives you that final polish. If there's one thing I'm not in love with about this sharpener, 
it's that it is a little bit tough to hold the chisel, at least for me, it's a little bit tough to hold it at that exact angle that I want because the way this works, it actually doesn't allow you to flip, at least I have found, I'll talk about this in a second, but I have found it doesn't allow you to turn the, the leather wheel upside down and then use your gauge down here um, simply because this is a little bit thicker. Um, I could be wrong on that, but it's not, not working for me to do that. So you've basically got to freehand it. So we've got this back up here. It's got a plenty of compound on it already. If it didn't, you could basically just apply the compound like so. And we're just gonna ease the chisel onto that again. And now we're at that stage where that compound is just ever so slightly cutting into the chisel and polishing up our edges. So I'm gonna let that backside really get nice and polished. And this is the part I'm not in love with because you have to really try and match that angle. Now, it's not cutting a huge amount of material off. So as you ease it in there, we just wanna polish that edge. Now this is the part of the process with this unit that I'm not in love with, uh, simply because I find it's very hard to hold the chisel at the precise angle. You're basically having to freehand it and it's kind of hard to just gauge where you're at whenever the wheel is spinning like this. Um, they do give you this little bar here. Um, I find that it's a little bit tedious to use the bar as well and you're kind of pointing these sharp edges right into your leather. So what I do, basically same thing, we're just gonna put the backside down and flatten that backside, let that compound really work to polish it up. And then this is where it's a little bit trickier to really find that exact angle to polish that leading edge at, at the precise point that you want. Still works decently well. It's just a little bit hard to tell exactly where you're at whenever you're doing this. Now before, whenever I would use my wet stones, I had this, uh, this board here, which has got leather on it, um, then a little bit softer leather on the other side. And it would be a little bit easier because you could rock the chisel up and just pull it pull it straight back. So you're manually doing it this way, but I do find it's a little bit easier to polish that edge freehanding it like this. Um, but I do like how fast on the backside I can do it, you know, just by laying it down on there and letting the tool do the work. So in the future, as I use this, I may still use this board uh, whenever I'm doing my beveled edge and then move back over here when I'm doing the backside. So again, whenever I bought this, I knew that the key to sharpening is to gradually um, decrease the grit uh, as you move through the, the process. And I actually opted to buy two leather honing wheels. So again, this one's got a little bit heavier cutting compound. And this one is my final wheel here. Um, shout out to Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Channel. He's kind of a master sharpener. I watched a video on his channel and he recommended buying this kit with polishing compounds. And basically I'm just using these two sticks out of here. This wider stick is my final cut. Um, and it's really just putting a very, very fine polished edge on it. The key to know if you've really done this process well is to actually not see any of your sanding marks or your scuff marks on the backside or the beveled edge whenever you're finished. Uh, on this chisel, it's looking pretty good, but I moved through the process pretty fast since we were recording. And you can still see some cut marks on it a little bit, but as a whole, it is polishing up pretty nicely and it's gonna be very sharp. But, I mean, if you want to absolutely have a crazy sharp chisel, 
the key is to go through each of these steps and give each step enough time um, to, to do its work and you'll end up with a 100% polished edge whenever you're done. So here we are. Um, these are all sharpened. I sharpened these yesterday. One of the nice things I like about this sharpener is I can just leave the wheel on and I can basically go through each chisel at the same time and just kind of sharpen them all at once. So again, it goes back to the economics of sharpening and finding an efficient system that works pretty well. And this was kind of nice, you know, you just kind of sit here, you put a podcast in your ears. It's very, very easy to use. You, the guide is all set up. You just inserting it in there. You can't hardly screw up the process too bad and it doesn't take much focus. Whereas if you're just trying to freehand sharpen on a stone like this, um, if you're not using a guide, you've gotta be very focused on what you're doing and it's easy to screw it up. But I don't know if you can see this very well, but if we come in close, it polished up pretty nicely. Again, we've got this area in the center that was not perfectly flat. Then our leading edge here also looks really nice. You can still see some very light marks right there. So I wouldn't say this is perfect, but it is extremely good. Um, a question you might have is how can you tell if a sh chisel is still sharp? And again, if we come down here and shave my arm a little bit more, you can just really quickly look at that and how that is, that is very sharp. So if I'm on site and I wanna see if my chisel is sharp, I can just grab one and, you know, kind of give myself a little shave and I can tell pretty quickly if it's, uh, if it's sharp or not. But hope this has helped you guys out. I'm really happy with this. I think it's finally gonna be an answer for me to be able to quickly sharpen tools in a way that I'll actually want to just plug it in and use versus some of these other things where like wet stones just always seemed like such a burdensome task to get them out and actually go through that process, especially if you use a lot of chisels and you also have employees who are using chisels as well. It ends up being a lot of sharpening. I think this is a really good unit and it gives great results. So final question, would I recommend the WorkSharp 3000 for sharpening? Um, I would. I think this is finally the answer for me. If you are in a similar workflow uh, that you see me in, I think this is gonna be a great option. Again, I'm, I'm comparing this against multiple other techniques that I've used and uh, it works really well. I would recommend purchasing a couple extra glass wheels and also the leather wheels if you really want to go through the whole process the way that you should. Again, I've got links to these products uh, in the video description below. If you're gonna purchase it and you click through those links, it does help the channel out and I appreciate that a lot. But hope you guys have found this video helpful. Um, it's been a long journey for me finding something that I like and I think I've finally found the answer. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.